everyone, and welcome to another segment of Lore You Should Know. I'm Greg Tito, and this segment is where we talk to these amazing lore masters, Mr. Chris Perkins. Hello. And Matt Cernit. Hi. About little fun bits of Dungeons & Dragons lore uh, for your own edification, or if you want to put it into your home game, that's what we're here for. And today, we are going to talk about the Seven Sisters. Mm. What are the Seven Sisters? Well, they're all related. <laughs> They were so they, they trace their origins back to so first of all seven sisters are part of Forgotten Realms lore. Yep, they trace their origins back to Ed Greenwood's home campaign, oh. where some of them were actual characters in his campaign. Oh, player characters that people you that oh. people ran or that he ran, um, and they're called the Seven Sisters because a they're sisters, b there are seven of them. They have a long and storied history in the realms. Yeah. Um, we're like that. There's so much written about them. We we can't possibly talk about everything. Like Ooh, uh, there, there's there's yeah. novels after novels after novels. There's a whole source book written about them. Second edition period. Um, yeah, they're all over the place. Mm-hmm. And they are uh, uh, very powerful. Like, are they wizards? Super are they powerful. adventuring party esque? So uh, the the way the story goes is that um, Mistra had a penchant uh, for uh, investing mortals with some of her power. Mistra, the goddess of magic. Yes. yes. And so uh, her reasoning behind that is a little mysterious. Um, but she invested uh, Kelvin and Elminster. They were pretty good stewards. There's some other ones um, that were revealed as stewards besides them later on. Some of them um, weren't great stewards and they went crazy and did crazy things. Mm. And the, the basic point, though, was that she wanted to sort of like further the cause of magic in the world, uh, that it should be something that people... Um, who have the the talent and the will, have the access to, and so on and so forth. And uh, a lot of these sort of bad stewards convinced her that um, she needed people who were really her people to kind of advance that that message. And the way she decided to do that was to have children. Oh, seven of them. Indeed. Oh, with the same father? Uh, yeah, the same. Well, I'm not sure about the mother being all the same because there's one that's a drow. Right. <laughs> yeah. Wait, okay, so she didn't give birth to them. Um, but but basically, uh, she. Um, it's a strange story where uh, she. There's a mortal man who uh, is in the Neverwinter area. Uh, what was would become Neverwinter, uh, and this is in like zero dr. So long time ago <laughs> and uh, and there's a half elf I think um, like Elu or something like that who um, he's courting and she possesses Elu with Elu's permission Mistra, event, Mistra, uh, Mistra, Mistra. inhabits Elu yeah. got it with, gets it on with yeah aforementioned gentleman yeah and it's interesting because like she she possesses her and then basically gets her permission later <laughs> and then she also uses magic. She, he's already courting her, but she uses magic to kind of like woo him. So I was like, whoa, mister, what are you doing? This seems <laughs> overly complicated. <laughs> yeah. But um, but yeah. The God shenanigans. God yeah. shenanigans. I was, I was trying to say well, it was in the Greek god level of, yeah. of, yeah, of it shenanigans. Is. It and it sounds like, much it. like that. Yes. Yep. And the, the result is uh, seven sisters eventually. Um, and they they go their various ways in life and have various abilities. Some of them are very powerful wizards. Um, several of them are. Uh, others are more sort of warrior wizard types, um, and others are just, I think Dove's just a straight-up ranger. I'm mm-hmm. not positive. Yeah. Um, but all of them have essentially uh, an immortal life, more or less, and uh, magical healing powers, and... Um, that sort of magic that she imbues with them uh, gives them kind of a demigod status. I see. So that means that they can become uh, uh, interwoven with the stories of campaigns of people all the time. Yeah. Yes. And some of them have had uh, a very profound impact on sort of the history of the realms and as it unfolded. Uh, One of them was a Viking queen for a long period of time. Yeah. And uh, she ruled a kingdom called Stornanter. That went like many forgotten realms by the wayside. <laughs> it was forgotten. It was forgotten. Uh, uh, but where she was, wasn't. was it on the Sword Coast or was it? Yeah, it, w- it was. Um, I think l- the Lylan was the capital at yeah. the time, uh, and that's north of Waterdeep. Okay, right. between Waterdeep and, yep. and, and Neverwinter. And then you know she's she is currently living large in Waterdeep. That same 
personage. Yes. Yep. Yes. That, Interesting. That, that sister. Yes. Because part of what's being, you know, you get imbued by this power, you're immortal. Yes. Can you? Yes. Can they be slain? Yes. Uh, it seems so. Yeah. 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 There are several who have. Um, one in particular was dead from for pretty much all of the second edition period, and that was. Uh, I'm going to mess up the name. Silune. Yeah. That's correct. <laughs> but dead. Dead in sort of the, the comic book kind of way dead. Right. Where she could be brought back for convenience in various forms and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, her, some of her sisters still communicate with her even though she's dead. So um, like and isn't they, it her tears that are on the moon? No, that's, no, that's, that's a different. different. So that's Saloon versus Salune, I think. Got or it. vice versa. I, don't I, know. Always, pr- I always pronounce the, the dead sister Silune just to just separate <laughs> her from. <laughs> yeah. That makes sense. Um, so uh, one of the things that would happen in novels a lot is the characters would actually carry around a cobblestone of her house. And uh, she haunted her house. Mm-hmm. And so her ghost could can then come and communicate and... Uh, this piece through this house. piece of stone or, or like communicate with uh, others and sort yeah. of carry messages okay. back and forth yeah. and like interact with them and stuff right. like that. That's cool. And yeah. we hear, we, we do see conversations between her and one or two of her sisters as late as Ed Greenwood's last novel, which is Death Masks. Cool. Yeah. All right. So, they, so. They, 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 the tendrils will continue to yeah. weave through the so plot. They, they feel the like an realms. ever-present element of the realms even when they're not personally around. Yeah. And they are all over the place in the history of the realms. Um uh, I mean, big parts of it are um, the symbol of Aglaron, the Witch Queen of Aglaron is one of them. Um, uh, who's up in... Where's uh, Aglaron? Aglaron's on the inner sea, um, the Sea of Fallen Stars. Yeah, oh, okay. I knew I've heard that name uh, before. Illustrial Silverhand is sort of the, was the leader of uh, Silvery Moon for a really long time. Oh, okay. Um, Storm. Uh, is she a full full elf then? Um, or? No. No, no she no. Silver Moon. Silver Moon is a isn't an elf city. It's a it's an elf friendly city. But, Got it. Um, so uh, I always get those mixed up. <laughs> and uh, Storm Silverhand is a uh, a harper and a sorceress, and she's basically like this. Um, I don't know, like spell slinging Xena character <laughs> who runs yeah. around kicking butt. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Laryl. Uh, is uh, much more sort of circumspect in a lot of the novels and stuff like that. For a really long time, she had a relationship with Kelvin Blackstaff, and so that was a big deal. Um, they, they adventured together. Laryl Silverhand, okay. current yeah. open lord of Waterdeep. Yeah, that's what I was just going to say. I know that name, too. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's uh, Quilu Veladorn, and that is um, the dark sister because she's a drow. Um, so uh, the, the circumstances of that are, are as it says on the FR Wiki, exceptionally odd. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but there's Dove Falconhand, and I mean, and the, all these characters in, uh, especially in Ed's novels, um, have lots of roles. Uh, he, he tends to return less novels to um, those characters, to Mert, uh, and, and a lot of them, um, up until sort of the fourth edition period, w- was the King of Cormier and stuff like that. Those are kind of his favorite people to play with. Got it. And so these uh, uh, sisters, can, actually now I want to ask more about the drow and how that came to be. Is that <laughs> <laughs> So uh, let's see. Let me see if I can get a short version before I go and dive deep into the... Into um, the, the crazy lores yeah, of yeah. it. Yeah. So... Da, 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 da. What I like about what about these these characters in general, though, is that they are kind of fate touchers, right? They're, they're like you know, if they are involved in your story, you know that it has import for right the Forgotten Realms. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, they they do sort of feel like uh, almost Forgotten Realms superheroes in a sense. Um, because of the power level of the, their characters and the things that they can do. I mean, because they, they aren't just, you know, awesome fighters and, uh, you know, um, people who can heal fast and stuff like mm-hmm. that. They, I mean, they, they literally have super strength and um, can do just crazy, crazy things. So, so they almost become a, a deus ex machina as yeah. well, too, just to be like, all right, here's where we want to change this. Or, yeah, yeah and, and a lot of their stories, too, they are uh, going up against really super powerful enemies as well, like mm. Manchun and Fazul and, and stuff like that. So they're, they're or uh, Larlock, um, the sort of uh, lich king or, or um, on the Sword Coast uh, until recently. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> dot, dot, dot. Yeah, so in the events of um, 
gosh, what was the last novel of the Sundering series? The Herald? The Herald, yes. Uh, Larlock comes in at the end and reveals that he is also a chosen of Mistra and also has been invested in power like all these other people. Oh. And so he attempts to be, sort of gain godhood in that last moment. And uh, he is prevented by Elminster and I think Storm, Storm. and Illustrial, but maybe a yeah. Dove. I'm not sure. I think it's Illustrial. Uh, and he is vaporized into um, the weave. And what happened to him after that? I don't know. He's a lich. He has a phylactery somewhere. <laughs> he's, <laughs> refor- he's reforming. Who yeah. knows? Yeah. So that's yeah. interesting. So do they, you know, it, w- what you suggested there? That sounds like they team up often. Mm-hmm. Uh, are, mm-hmm. is there, is there yeah, they're super friends. <laughs> they're super friends. Yeah. Do they com- do they have a, uh, a a way to communicate with each other? Uh, it depends on, on the circumstances. Um, so there's a lot of magic that they just use, like, like you know, sending spells and the like and so yeah. on. Um, I don't – there might be occasions in which they actually just have a psychic link in some of the novels and so mm-hmm. on. But mostly, um, you know, like that they, – Yeah, they communicate through objects or through – Ma- no spells, spells yeah. and you know sending right. stones and that kind of a thing. Do they have meetups? Do they go to like the they Avengers do. Tower and stuff? Yeah, I, occasionally. I mean, like the the symbol in Agalrond was mostly down there f- for much of the uh, the growth of the setting. Um, it's not. I think it was in Death Masks where she finally because uh, she fourth edition said that she uh, was driven crazy by Is it Mistra was um, uh, uh, so the symbol. One of the sisters. The one of the sisters is the symbol. The witch I'm queen of Aglaron. Symbol, not symbol. Symbol. <laughs> Got it. I, I was actually thinking of a, a, yeah. a mark or something of a symbol. So yeah. she's the, the the witch queen of Aglaron. She was super super powerful. Yeah. Um, and you know there was even a one of the um, Wizards Three articles in Dragon Magazine where Elminster uh, uh, warns um, uh, the the dark elf from Dragonlance, uh, Dalimar. Dalimar, basically don't piss this lady off because she can take out all three of us oh <laughs> so so she's like woo super power rough. level just yeah. goes through yeah. the roof um yeah. and and basically at, during mo- most of the second edition and third edition period she was more or less single-handedly responsible for holding off Thay from much of the rest of the world got it so, okay um so symbol she's super powerful yeah in uh death masks um she shows up and uh let's see is she does she help with Morden Canaan? I think I think she does. I think that happens. Yeah, Morden Canaan's also in that book, Death Man. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He's one of the Wizards Three. He's yes. one of the Wizards Three, yes. right? Yeah. And so he, he shows uh, made an up. appearance in Curse of Strahd. In fact, yeah. yes, he did. And I think I think um, both of them are are sort of cured to some degree of their insanity in that novel. But I think the symbol also uh, is dead, dead by the end of it. So. Got it. Spoilers. Spo- God, we're all full of spoilers <laughs> today. Uh, so, uh, in general, though, right? This feels like they're they're these Greek goddesses and 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 superheroes, like all these kind of things. That we've how can we use that in uh, uh, your table game to great effect instead of just making it feel like you're railroading or something like that? Yeah, I, I mean, I think one of the interesting things that happened um, with the uh, the Sundering and Fifth Edition and so on is. We, we uh, established that these super, super powerful characters were diminished to some degree. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we haven't fully said how much they're diminished right. and so on. It's a sort of a secret that they're guarding. And so, you know, Laryl's now the open lord of uh, Waterdeep. Um, but, you know, if you go to, like, meet Laryl, it's like going to go meet Wonder Woman or Superman, right? Like, holy crap. Now, you don't know. Maybe she She's got kryptonite in her pocket, and and she's really weak. But you can't really tell. But she's got this power. Yeah, you know that the, uh, this char- the charismatic yeah, yeah. like. You know. Yeah, that was all uh, when the gods kind of retreat from the world at the end of the Sundering, yeah. end of fourth edition, essentially, and say we're going to let mortals basically control their own fates and imbue them with less of our personal power. People like Laryl kind of took a hit, um, mm. but she has, she's not going around and saying Mistra has you know left me. You know, Weaker than I was. Oh, and by the way, I'm still a really powerful mage. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. So hands off. I just don't have all the crazy. <laughs> right. I don't have all the crazy that. wild things that I used to do, or I, you know, I might be known for. But you don't know that. Yeah. And I'm not about to tell you because I've been sort of sucked into this political position of power, and I'm not going to let my enemies know. That's that I'm a really in this position. interesting thing for a dungeon master to play. Is right. Like, oh, the, but, I'm this very powerful. But being, these, these individuals but, are very powerful, but they also realize that in a way their time has sort of come and gone. Right. And so they 
with few exceptions, they're happy to let other people carry the balls of destiny forward uh, and do important things while they kind of mellow. Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy life if they can. If they can. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, there's a sense that those characters all um, are still involved in mm -hmm. these events, but they're sort of behind the scenes kind of pushing things one way or another rather than uh, going in and kicking down doors. Um, Occasionally, so. they still kick down doors. Yeah, you know, um, if and, Ed writes a novel. Yeah, if Ed <laughs> writes a novel and he wants Laryl to go single-handedly down into Under Mountain and slap Xanathar around like a little beholder bitch, <laughs> uh, <laughs> he can do that, and he did. So <laughs> uh, there was, there's a great scene where uh, – so Laryl is dealing with the, the, pol the politics of Waterdeep, right. something she is unaccustomed to after years of just kind of being off on her own, doing her own thing, right. having to – navigate the minefield of mask lords and nobles and whatever. So when Xanathar gets a little uppity, it's like, okay, time to dig out the adventuring gear. Now's I'm going to get out of the palace for a half hour and kick this beholder's ass. She goes down into the depths under water deep, uh, sm just blows death tyrants away. Like they're nothing. Wow. In order to get to the Xanathar shows up in his inner sanctum and finds out that he is hiding from her. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, doesn't want no. any part of her. He just hides, basically sends a disembodied voice to, to tell her, oh, I'm sorry, the janitor is not home right now. <laughs> <laughs> and she eventually has to just see the fact that she's probably not going to find him before dinner time. And so she leaves and returns to the palace. Nice. And the janitor is like, oh, my God. <laughs> 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 that was one, seven sister. Nice. Yeah. So when they actually team up and get together, yeah. then it's they can take down you know countries like Thay and all that stuff. Well, and they did get together for a, a, a bit of a rout at uh, Mithranor, um, where they had to deal with some Netherese fallout some time ago. Nice. Yeah. And uh, 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 I think I saw you tweeting about that. That actually is one of the reasons why Mithranor is it's no back more. In its ruined state. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, any other uh, uh, details about the Seven Sisters we wanted to get across? I mean, what about the ranger and the drow? All right, yeah. Let's, uh, do you have any? So, uh, yeah, Dove Falconhand is um, sort of the more sort of rangerish one. Um, and I guess it seems like she might have I died. Think I think she's dead. Yeah. I believe that uh, Laryl talks to her from the afterlife. Ah. Yeah. Um, and and she was more sort of like, uh, I mean, uh, she was still a, uh, a serious badass, but in comparison to the others, it seemed like more of a sort of low-level kind of character. She was mm -hmm. more sort of Grounded. riding horses yeah. and going into dungeons and that kind of thing. Not right. ruling empires. And <laughs> yeah. Got it. And maybe that was just personality-wise. That's right. what she yeah. was more comfortable yeah. with doing anyway. That's the other thing. I mean, they've each got their uh, very individual personalities, so they're, there's really... I mean, the two who seem most like each other are, I think, Laryl and Illustriel in some ways because they're both super powerful wizards. Mm -hmm. So they, And they both hang around El Elminster far too much. Um, but the other ones are kind of all off doing their own things and following their own beliefs. Until one big thing yeah. happens and they have to, you know, and, and then a purple guy yeah. from the sky and then, comes. And you get a couple of them <laughs> grouping up together. <laughs> Uh, so uh, and then, so yeah, the dark sister, that's, yeah. the, that's the last so, kid. Kalue Veladorn, yeah. So, she, so she was born to human parents. Right. So they're, right there, what? it starts getting weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting weird. <laughs> and, and by born, I mean not exactly, because I think what happens is her mother dies while she's still in the womb. And Mistra basically like makes swap? cuts a deal with a drow god to put her in a drow woman's womb to complete the delivery. Ah. <sighs> Ah. And what comes out by agreement between these two gods is actually a drow and not a human. Okay. So conceived as a human, born as a drow is her kind of deal. Interesting. Which is really weird. weird. Yeah. Right? Was she cast out? Unprecedented. Immediately? Yeah. Yeah. Well, so she ends up, uh, there's there's a, uh, I'm going to forget the name, Dark Maiden some Walk or Promenade. The Promenade. There's a place in Undermountain where um, sort of followers of Elystri, uh the drow goddess of... Not being like Drow. Um, <laughs> is, uh, the Drow goddess of we hate Loth. <laughs> yeah. Got she, it. she has sort of like a... That was the one that there was the deal with? with? Yeah. Got it. Yeah. She has a group of people of Drow that have collect there in Undermountain, um, free from Drow society, but not willing, not able to sort of go back to the surface and that right, kind of thing. Right, like Limbo. And uh, she ends up leading that for many, many years in the setting. And then she goes oh. on her own adventures and has novels written about her and all kinds of things. Got it. Interesting. All right, so there's a lot to mine mm -hmm. there. 
Uh, and it seems like all these characters might yeah. be really interesting to at least introduce, uh, uh, like a you know, a, a passing or or, or you know, may have, maybe have like a big uh, uh, part of your plot. Several of and several of the seven sisters will have cameos to one degree or another in at least one upcoming story. Ooh, well, that's good to know. Yeah. Uh, well, great. Well, thank you guys uh, for for all of your seven thoughts on the Seven Sisters. Yes. Uh, where can people ask you more questions, uh, especially about that last bit that you just said? <laughs> uh, you can reach me on at Twitter at Chris Perkins DND. I'm also on Twitter at at Cernet, S-E-R-N-E-T-T. Awesome. Uh, thanks, you guys. We'll be back next week with another lore you should know. Thanks. Forgot to mention that uh, Laryl is actually also the head of the Lord's Alliance in Waterdeep. She's got wearing a lot of hats. She wears a lot of hats. Yeah, yeah. She's a super powerful wizard. I didn't realize she was she was demigod status. Uh, uh, I knew yeah. she was super powerful, but yeah. dang, she's actually statted up in an upcoming book. <laughs> We're still As, alive. Yeah. <laughs> Stop talking, Chris. It's all right. Nobody knows anything. <laughs> Uh, so we are going to go to our next lore topic, and I forgot what I emailed you guys what those were. Do you remember? Netherese Empire. Netherese Empire. Oh, gosh. my gosh. Not a small topic. Not <laughs> a small topic. <laughs> That's good. But I feel like we, we can always we mention broad it. strokes. We always hit it in different areas. <laughs> yeah. Um, they, are, they are sort of a ubiquitous element, so it's worth yeah, talking about. Definitely. Yeah, exactly. Uh, all right. I'm ready whenever you are, Ryan. Sweet. You guys good? Yeah. All right. Welcome to another segment of Lore You Should Know. I am Greg Tito, and I'm joined by these amazing lore masters, Mr. Chris Perkins. Hello. And Matt Cernit. Hi. And today on Lore You Should Know, where we delve into little bits of Dungeons & Dragons lore for your table, or just so you know it, uh, we're going to talk about the Netherese Empire. Netherol. 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 A not-so-little piece of FR lore. Yes. Yeah. And as we were just saying moments ago, a ubiquitous part of the world and True. definitely worth talking about. Yes. Netherol, the empire of magic. We have definitely covered it, I think, before in different areas. Yes. Remember, mentioned it uh, yes. uh, uh, here and there. Maybe even done an entire segment on it, but it is worth doing again. Boxed uh, sets have been written about. Boxed Netherol. sets. That's true, yep. yep. It's plural? Plural boxed sets? So one big box. One box set and uh, some a book. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. So there's a lot to mine into yep. here. And rare do you see a FR product where you don't see the word netheril or netherese mentioned within it. Yep. It is one of the most prominent of the Forgotten Realms. Yeah, it's interesting. The It shows up first in the original gray box, uh, the Empire of, of Netheril. And um, the it says that the most sort of prominent rune that people know about uh, anything about is uh, the uh, ruins of Decanter, uh, the mines of Decanter, and that's a Netherese ruin that everybody has heard about, and that's that's the one. Mm-hmm. And the funny thing about the way that the, it developed in the setting after that is that that is sort of like the least interesting place. <laughs> 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 it just ended up being the first mention, but it's got some some weird looking goblins in it, yeah. and you know whatever. But like yeah. after that, we're like, no, 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 no. There's so much cooler places, and, and so the Netherese are are uh, in Galtalgrim, the Netherese are in Luskin, the Netherese are in Undermountain, the Netherese are. Uh, in the the flying cities of shade, they can come back in third edition. They're under the ocean in the sea of fallen stars. They're at uh, Old Owl Well. <laughs> Where's Old Owl Well? It's, it's in the. Uh, it actually appears briefly, I think, in um, the starter set because yeah. that's in that area of of Grand Realm Sword Coast oh, area, cool. and it's just yeah. like an old. Uh, it's a well. Um, and uh, at one point, the Netherese used it as sort of like a watering hole, and they set up a, a sort of fortress there when they were moving around and doing stuff. Oh, nice. So, but that's yeah. long ruins. Fortress there. is long gone. Yeah. The well so. is still there. No, <laughs> probably some owls around, I hope. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> uh, so this was like a far-ranging empire, right? Like yeah. it was oh, uh, akin to yes. uh, uh, anything in our, like Roman Empire, or much more... Uh, as far Scale as scope wise, yeah, I think so. Um, it, it, it's a little weird because of the way that it developed. Um, so uh, the Netherese were uh, s- imagine sort of a, a Stone Age people um, living uh, near some elves uh, up in the north, mm-hmm. and at some point, some uh, guy shows up, and he's called the Terraceer. And he says, hey, guys, maybe you should read these scrolls. 
And these scrolls have uh, these golden scrolls of stuff. They're called the Nether Scrolls, and they have magic spells on them. And it's a form of spell casting that the elves don't even understand. Like it's not their their magic even. And uh, and the humans get a hold of this, and they're like, okay, let's check this stuff out. And so they do. And they proceed to become super powerful wizards. Mm. And yeah. it's like giving, you know, cell phone technology to medieval societies. You know, if the humans are smart enough and can crack it, they can make a huge jump evolutionary, evolutionarily yeah. um, forward. Right. And so uh, th- this, this, these people become the, the netherese. And they, it, they have a really long history in the this, this setting um, where, uh, you know, there's a period where they're mostly living on the ground and so on and just uh, in the area that, that is now the Anorak Desert. Um, and they have, you know, ground-based cities and there's a giant inland lake there and they're, they're trading and doing all this stuff. But then as the wizards get more and more powerful, because uh, they can, at, you know, at the height of their powers, they're casting, I think, 10th or 11th level spells. Um, and they're just using magic in ways that magic can't be used anymore. Uh, they tenth or eleven spells. We don't even have I know. tenth level yeah. or eleventh yeah, level spells. That's the trick. Um, so you know, it's like carving mountains, the tops off mountains, and flipping them over and having them float up in the sky. You know, that's a spell. Um, <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> yeah, and, mountain slipper. Uh, you know, so they they start these flying cities um, for reasons that are unclear at this point. They also go out and. What do you mean? They, they don't, there's no reason why they need to have these flying cities because other than can. other than they can. They they can. And they can move around. So. And they can move the the. Were they like fortresses? Around. Were they were they used for they're, they're, for conquest? No, not particularly. They, they basically the the super powerful um, wizards uh, arcanists as they're called at that point. Um, sort of collect a, a cult of personality around them. So each of one of them is kind of their own tyrant mm-hmm. of their own floating city, and everybody um, kind of joins in. And, like, the whole society is stratified by people who can use magic. And so, like, most people um, who can use a little bit of magic are on these cities. Mm-hmm. And pretty much everybody can cast, like, cantrips and stuff like that. And, and then the cities themselves have, um, I think, mythals or mythalars, I forget which one, uh, which then do other things. So you, for example, might set up the whole thing so that everybody in your city can fly all the time. Or, yeah. you know, everybody in your city is protected from lightning or oh, something okay. like that. Um, and so there are these crazily magical societies that are then ruled by these different personalities that do magic in different ways and are exploring magic in different ways and trying to do different things with it. Um, also, at the same time, down on the surface, something weird's happening. Um, <laughs> The people who don't have magic are, are struggling, and, and they've been left behind by these powerful wizards who just ignored them. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, for some reason, gnomes are persecuted in Netheril, and so there's a huge flight of gnomes from the Empire. Oh. <laughs> there's a weird like note that they're like enslaved and treated really poorly, and so like there's a, there's a flight of gnomes. Um, I, I, a human wrote that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. <laughs> and uh, so, but then there are also some Netherese who don't like what's going on in Netheril, and so they form other um, sort of outer, sort of their own places outside of Netheril, far away. Mm-hmm. So uh, Luskin or Illusk, as it was called, is kind of one of these places where some Netherese have left Netheril to do their own yeah. thing. Some Netherese went to down to where Waterdeep later. Grew. A p- grew. Yeah. Uh, they went down into Under Mountain and found sources of magic there and kind of locked themselves away. Yeah. Wasn't there another group that went to, I'm forgetting the name of the country though, but it was the one that now currently has airships? Halrua. Halrua, right? Wasn't that? I that, think that's yeah, correct. That's yeah. correct. Um, so Which is they, a long way away. They, they do that. And what's also happening in Anorak is um, that the lake's drying up, this giant inland lake is drying up. And the land is turning to deserts. And um, if you're down there and you have magic, you're losing that magical ability. Mm. And that's because um, there's something down there under the ground um, that has been draining life and magic from the surface uh, in order to sort of interrupt and and disrupt the netherese. And that starts a, a long sort of shadow war between the netherese and the the pharim so (laughs) imagine if you will (laughs) a creature that looks like a gigantic floating funnel Uh with a bunch of cilia at its sort of wide open end and a maw at that 
wider end as well. Okay. Just flying around, uh, that is a ferim, and there's like an entire empire of them. And it's got arms. Yeah, it's got spindly <laughs> arms coming out of its funnel-shaped yeah, body. Arms. And it, it can uh, cast spells and do all kinds of different things. Yeah. And, and they're sort of like this weird um, aliens-esque kind of race uh, that's a sort of violently opposed to the netherese um but that where, where did they come from were they, they always there they've just been there just been <laughs> the whole time yeah. but now they have yeah. a target now they have the netherese um, as a target mm -hmm. so i mentioned the the terrasier earlier yes. uh so he we talked previously about the saruk in the lore you should know the terrasier is actually a saruk lich and he is and just real quick the saruk were the predecessors to so the, there were three. There were the three creator races. Yeah, the Shrook was one of them. Yes, and this is so way, 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 way back. Yeah. So he apparently is. There's a there's a group of lich Shrook liches in the area of Anorak that are um, sort of in stasis, and uh, he occasionally has w woken up from stasis to deliver these, you know, uh, n Nether scrolls to people and just kind of tilt the world in some direction mm. and why it's not clear like it's totally opaque as to what his reasoning is for his it's uh for doing that um but maybe it's because there's things called ferrum in the world and they're bad i don't know it's it's not clear i see and it doesn't have any divine uh you know anything that we think of as Faerunian gods don't have anything to do with this no the, no. the, no. the there are sort of deities that the saruk and so on worship but they they were kind of anti-god in general but okay if i know we were talking about ferrum i would have brought my ferrum miniature oh which, it's so glorious which a fan made for me it's oh. it's a one-of-a-kind deal i have it at my desk yeah. but it's too far it's away great nice yeah. all right well we'll have to bring it back on yeah. um so anyways that's super cool uh the what actually causes the fall of netheril is that um one particular wizard gets it in his head i think to cast a 12th level spell <laughs> Dun dun dun! <laughs> My spells go up to a twelve. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and and that spell is essentially a spell to steal the weave from Mistra. Ah, uh, and it works. Mm. Oops! Oops! Oops. Yeah. <laughs> and that uh, momentarily basically deletes magic from the world. And so um, most of the falling cities or flying most cities, of the flying cities turn into falling cities. <laughs> <into> falling <laughs> cities, <laughs> and they crash and burn. Uh, some of them escape into various demi planes or the plane of shadow and so on. That's that's who eventually come back as the Empire of Shade. Mm. They are the Netherese because they are the Netherese who spent a long time in the Shadowfell. Yeah, right. Who we they yes. come back. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. And uh, yeah, and so there's a. There's a whole uh, sort of set of novels about that that period, um, and that that sort of section of time in Front Realms is called the Arcane Age. The Arcane Age. Yeah, and there's there's a box set about it, and there's some novels. Um, what uh, what time period in our world were those published? Oh, mid eighties. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, maybe later eighties. I'd have to check. Okay, so yeah, A, a D and D. Uh, uh, it would have coincided with the Empire of Magic box set, whatever that is. Yeah, that Got was a, definitely second edition. Yeah. Cool. Um. So yeah, and as as we've said, these these the the, the Nether Roll uh, have been the genesis for almost all of like the, the the magic and stuff of the of the of the current Forgotten Realms in some ways, right? Yeah. So. Um, there's there's lots of things that are attributed to the Netherese, various magic items and stuff like that all over the world. Um, but the the interesting thing is that like after that collapse of um, magic, uh, people start using. I, I mean, besides the Netherese, most people didn't use the magic w the way they did it anyway. But people basically go back to the way that elves did magic, and mm -hmm. uh, so they're 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 tapped or capped at ninth level again. You know, they can't do these crazy spells like time travel and, um, you know, uh, shearing the tops off mountains and the spells that make them live for centuries. And um, the Netherese actually discovered spell jamming, uh, you know, so like that crazy things like that. They, you know, they're they're not doing anymore, but they're, you know. So at the, at the height of the, the floating cities, they were the ones that created the, 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 the ships to go through into realm space? Yeah, yeah. They discovered spell jamming. Yeah. So I mean, according to this, the Netheril Empire of Magic box set released in 96, which is later than I thought. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's 96. Yeah. So that's... That would have been just... Be, that would have been just during the, the, end the of collapse of TSR. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Coincidence. Which uh, <laughs> seems kind of prescient now. What you think about it? Uh, all right, cool. Uh, any other uh, bits on Netherall before we uh, end this? Because I know uh, it's it's a far region topic, so I don't want to go yeah, too far yeah, into yeah. specifics. So let, let's see. I, I have it on my notes here that um, let's see. It fell around eighteen hundred years before the current date. Uh, and it was a magical society for about three thousand years before that. So, it, it, it had some staying run. power. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's why there's so many ruins and so many buildings and so many things that people can still yes. discover to this day yeah. uh, that have yet been Correct. uncovered. Because they're so widespread, it's a great plot device. You could have people just looking for lost Netherese artifacts or lost Netherese outposts or redoubts all across the realms. And if you go, if you find one and you can go down there, you can expect to find some pretty wacky ma- magical stuff. Yeah. Um, lo- we in, in fifth edition, most of the magic items have to be found. They can't just be bought. So if you want characters with magic items, finding a lost Netherese cache is a good way to is it the kind of thing though in the in the realms too where they uh, where it's well known uh, like like say like you you go to, to anyone uh, 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 and talk about the Roman Empire I feel like <laughs> most people would know what that was even if they don't know the details. Well, we are Do most people about forgotten the realms? forgotten realms. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. Is this one that is not forgotten, or is this one actually forgotten as well by most of the common people? I think most people don't know much about it at yeah. all. Okay, no, yeah. it, it, it's it's something that's mostly the realm of scholars and wizards mm-hmm. and stuff like that. I mean, obviously there were l- l- sort of the, the city of empire shade and the living netherese that had a big impact on the setting in uh you know the third and fourth edition period right and so but that's generations ago at this point yeah i mean the fact that they're connected to people that you know were around negative uh 503,654 dr is is a little i think mysterious to most people Cool. All right. Well, that's an, that's an important detail because that means that you can use it even more, you know, more mm-hmm. more so because that, you know, yeah. any kind of rumor of netherese doesn't necessarily mean like, ooh, stuff that means something. It might just go past along, right? Yeah. Or you might only get a piece of it, you know, a little slice of what it was like. Yeah. I suspect people who live in Sembia and Cormir who were actually accosted by the Empire of Shade, the end of fourth edition, mm-hmm. they might harbor some information about Netheril, but it might be skewed by their own experiences. They were dealing with a fraction of what Netheril yeah. once represented. Um, these weird Netherese who went into the Shadowfell and then came out half shade, like ghostly, spectral shadow form. That's what they probably equate with Netherese in their minds now, but that's not really what Netheril was about. And, and if you're elsewhere in the world, you know, um, and you encounter Netherese ruins, you're dealing with something that's at least a couple thousand years old, maybe. Yeah. Um, it, uh, so, and, uh, you know, who's lived there since then? What's gone on? You know, how has it changed? Right. So, you know. On it, the other hand, a long-lived species like elves or dragons would probably be much more informed and much mm. more aware of what was happening or what had happened to Netheril and why. Yeah. Um, and they don't have a very fond memory of that empire even back then. No, right? no. no. The, in fact, uh, the Netherese were fond of uh, dominating dragons and using them as mounts. Yep. Ah. Dragons hate, 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 hate. Not, <laughs> not like a fan. That. Not a fan. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. So don't don't use that. <laughs> uh, oh, and also, according to FR anyway, um, the Netherese invented iron stones. Oh. Those floaty things that gave you uh, uh, plus head. one AC yeah. without a, sp- a slot that you breathe without, without air. Yes. <laughs> those are the best. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully, uh, uh, we'll start awarding those. We could do a future lore you should know on Ion Stones. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. yeah, I would like that. All right, great. Thank you, guys. Uh, where can people find out more uh, about lore of the Forgotten Realms? I am on Twitter at Chris Perkins DND. I'm on Twitter at Cern, S E R N E T T. Awesome. Thank you guys very much. Thank uh, you. We shall be back with more Laurie Cheneau next week. Thank you. How do I cast a 12th level spell? I know, right? I'll I didn't my know. Twitter feed. It, it might have been 11th. I, I, yeah, I, 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 I have right. regrets. We're going up to 13th. <laughs> We're going up to 13th level pretty soon. Where's the book of 12th level spells? <laughs> awesome. Well, I don't think we have time to kind of cram in another one. Uh, okay. What was the last one? I forget what it was even, too. Uh, shoes, shoes. Yeah, what do? Shoes. What is the footwear of Genasi? The fr- Genasi. 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 Oh, yeah, yeah. We got a lot of questions about that on the twitters. Uh, is it a short topic, or is that something we could? Yeah, ish, ish, ish. Yeah. You want to try and do it? In yeah, we can do it. Eleven minutes. minutes. Yeah, we can do it. Sure. Let's do it. Okay. You want to do it? Genasi.
Genassi, never mind. Strike that. Reverse what I just said. Not Genassi. Genassi. The creator of Genassi, pronounce it with a J. J. <laughs> I think Soft from G. the word genie. Is that where it comes from? Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, my. I can't wait to ask that. Uh, welcome to another... Uh, Blore, you should go. Blore. <laughs> Blore, you should not care about. <laughs> Take two. Welcome to another Lore You Should Know segment. I'm Greg Tito, and I am joined by the amazing Mr. Chris Perkins. Thank you. And Matt Cernan. Hi. And today on this segment, where we delve into little bits of Dungeons & Dragons lore, uh, for your information, we are going to talk about Genasi and where that race comes from. You pronounced it correctly. I did. Okay. Yes. Phew. What? Wait, so it's it's derived from genie? Yep. Is Gen- that correct? That's correct. Genasi, not Genasi. Genasi. <laughs> Genasi. Is that ah uh, Genasi? Genasi. Got it. Uh, yeah, so these are uh, they're imbued with uh, elemental powers? They are humanoids of elemental bent. Does that mean that there was a, 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 an elemental entity in their ancestry who uh, uh, laid down with a human or So there are there are four kinds of genies. There's air, earth, fire, and water genies, and their their names are genie, D J I N N I, Ifrit, Marid, and Dao, and uh, each of them is a manifestation of the elements. And genie blood or essence or spirit or whatever you call it suffuses the four aspects of the Genasi race, which are similar in that they're sort of divided into fire, air, earth, and water. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think in, um, they appeared first in Planescape, I believe? That would be right. Uh, and so that was in second edition when we had uh, Tieflings and Asmar show up as well. Mm-hmm. And so I think it was just like, oh, there's more planar races. There are the more people who have you know ancestry mm-hmm. or, or somehow bloodline right. related right. to these yes. elemental beings. Yes. When you break down the, the, the barrier so. between between planes, all of a sudden there's going to be some intermingling. Yeah, yeah. You and the tendency back in second edition was to have mortal races that could be identified with all the different planes, <coughs> um, or most of them. I don't. Think there was never a mortal race tied to the plane of vacuum. <laughs> 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 that race just sucks. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm fine. <laughs> but uh, when it came around to attach races to the uh, the elemental planes, the Genasi were the fruits of that. Um, creative effort. I see. And they all have individual powers based on their their element to a certain extent. They have a certain commonality in that they're all kind of humanoid, um, but then they manifest p- their elementalness in a, in a, one of the four ways. Yeah. I mean, art, sort of art style, like what they look like has varied from edition to edition. Yes. Um, so I, I think at this point, you look like whatever you want. And yeah. <laughs> you're, call yourself an Ajasi. That's yeah. fine. They've, they never had a consistent look, even when they were first created. Mm. You could have, as a fire Genasi, you might have smoldering black eyes, hair like flames, or hair that's just orange, but then your skin is sort of burnt and charred looking. Um, you know, as an earth Genasi, you could be kind of big, hulking, almost thing-like. Mm. Um, or you could just be sort of a brown, dusky-skinned, good-looking person with a hint of earthiness to you. Like you might smell like brimstone or you not cast brimstone off or dust earth. like pig, pig pen. You, yeah, you, that's you, what you, I was yeah too, exactly. Right? You, <laughs> you should, have dust behind you. You have little dust particles falling <laughs> in your wake or whatever. It was pretty much left to the imagination. And Tiefling was concepted, and even Asmar concepted similarly. There was a broad range of what they looked like. No singular codified look. But then with fourth edition, there was a determined effort to try to canonize the look of the Genasi, which I think met with limited success. They had these sort of almost like ley line, glowing lines through their flesh. Mm. Um, And that was sort of a common feature for all of them. And then they would manifest things like wavy hair. Crystals too. Crystals, yes. Crystal crystal hair. is Crystal hair. So, I I mean, one of the things about the sort of the weird uh, tail wagging the dog kind of things about fourth edition (laughs) was that uh, there was so much emphasis on miniatures and how the game was played with miniatures tactically. 
um, that the miniatures product kind of drove a lot of decisions for um, what we put in the game. So Genasi have this unique look because we want to be able to say when you look at a mi- figure on the table, that's a Genasi. You Got know? it. And so when it's only an inch and a half tall or whatever, um, you, you know, have to make you it. have to make it pop. Yeah. Uh, you know, same same thing with some of the weird races that crept into fourth edition. You know, they were often you know an attempt to make something that was really unique visually, yeah. so that we could have unique you know uh, things on the table for people to play with. Hello, Got it. shard mind. Hello, wildling. That yeah. was shard mind was a thing that popped in my mind. <laughs> yeah. My shard mind when yeah. I said that. So uh, in in the Forgotten Realms, Janasi have culture. Um, many of them live in Kalimshan. Yes. So there's, um, with 4th edition, uh, the Janasi went from being sort of an also-ran kind of race in the world where, um, you know, they were extant because they were existed in 2nd edition and 3rd edition, but, uh, but we didn't really know much about them or why they were there or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Um, the there's two places where the story really popped up. One is in Akinol. Akinol is sort of a nation that was founded by Genasi transferred from a beer, um, not the drink, but... Uh, <laughs> 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 the, the, the Toril and a beer. Yeah, the, 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 the mirror that. world of Toril. Right. Um, and so they set up shop there uh, and uh, became sort of a, a you know pretty major power on that sort of inner sea area. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the other was uh, the um, genies that were involved in Kalimshan's kind of founding um, the, God, what are their names? They're Memnon and Kalim. Oh, yes. Right? Yes. And um, sort of they had a bit of a comeback and brought with them elemental servitors, uh, other genies and genasi. And basically, um, they enslaved a lot of the people of Kalimshan and mm. became quite a, sort of the ruling class of Kalimshan for a while. Yeah. Um, and then throughout the through the course of the Sundering and a planned comic that didn't happen, <laughs> 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 there um, was a storyline where essentially um, the I, I believe the story and I, I could be wrong because it, like I said the comic didn't happen. But the idea was the chosen of Ilmater. Uh, who is the god of suffering, oh. um, basically works to free the people of Kalimshan from rule of the genies. And that's sort of an assumed end result in Sorko's Adventures Guide and our later project products because that comic was supposed to happen, but it didn't. It just, you know. I see. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Interesting. All right. And then is it also true that uh, you, to be, to be a Genasi, you don't necessarily have to have Genasi parents? Is that true, or can or do you need to have some of that well, passed down? Well, we sort of think of them now as as independent um, species, races, whatever you yeah. want to call it, just like dwarves and elves and stuff like that. Um, there's still the idea that like you could have a bloodline of X, Y, and Z, and then they can sort of erupt. Um, but I, th- I mean, I think both ideas are kind of present at the same time to a degree, but. Uh, you know, we let's see. What product do they appear in at this point? Was it Princess of the Apocalypse? Yes. Or they, like yeah, they appeared. We we did them up as player character races in the online expansion for the Elemental Evil storyline. Right. Um, so that's when you could play them as PCs for the first time. Yeah, and I believe. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And then I think a lot of people loved that. Yeah. Uh, 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 those options mm-hmm. because you were able to create these characters that had these you know, connections to to. Uh, uh, you know, fire. Obviously, having a fire sorcerer be a fire genasi just makes right. a lot of sense. Yes, and you you have a, something a very visually distinctive race from anything else in the game. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, so, in some ways, that that goal of, of fourth edition of having the miniature be something striking, I think, yeah. kind of held true a little bit. Yeah, I mean, they they are freakish, but they can pretty much show up in any place in the Sword Coast and not be completely. You know, people won't just look at them aghast and say, "What the heck is that? It's a monster! Kill it!" Uh, most people kind of kind of know what a genasi is, or have seen one, or have heard of them. Yeah, at some point, it's not like a like a drow. You're still up. you're still it's still like the circus coming to town. I mean, don't yeah. get me wrong, but yeah, I mean, there, there's fourth edition um, put genasi into various places as um, just sort of normal people. Yeah. So an embedded race. Yeah, yeah. yeah, like Neverwinter, I think has um, a shipping company run by a genasi, and so you know, yeah. Um, uh, in a number of different places, they're they're there just Genasi sort of, who live and work in Waterdeep. Yeah, so they're just sort of accepted people. Yeah, interesting, great. And then uh, uh, any um, ideas or, or ways to use them in your stories, just as as people, as as interesting characters. 
Um, yes. Yes. Yeah, right. <laughs> There's lots of ideas. How much time you got? I'm fishing. I'm fishing for, uh, for an ending point here. Uh, I, th- I think that the... Like a water genasi. The, um, the, the st- if you're playing the Forgotten Realms, the story of, of like, uh, you know, someone who's comes from a family that's been displaced and knew this other world is kind of interesting. Mm. Uh, I also think the idea of, you know, your... You, you're part of uh, a dynasty of genies and stuff like that that got run out of Cam- Kalimshan and like how do you feel about that <laughs> like, mm-hmm. you know you you were a conquering people who enslaved people but now you're you're run off yeah um, so you know what is what is your place in the world now and that kind of a thing is, is an interesting story um, but I mean the characters themselves just b- by uh, virtue of, of what they are like and and um, the, the powers that they have I think just there's a wealth of interesting story opportunities there. Very cool. Awesome. Well, thank you, guys. Uh, if people want to do any follow-up questions on the Genasi, how can they get in touch with you? I'm on Twitter at Chris Perkins DND. I'm on Twitter at, at Cernet, S-E-R-N-E-T-T. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. And we'll be back uh, next week with some more segments of fun. ba 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 Thank you, everyone. Uh, we will be back in just about two, five minutes. I just need to get Shelly back here so we can do another interview uh, with Carlos Luna from Neon Rivals. Uh, we got some fun stuff to talk about uh, on the Skypes. Uh, so thank you to everyone who has been paying attention the last couple of hours here. We are going to run a bit of ads, uh, and uh, you subscribers out there won't have to view them. So good on you, and uh, <laughs> thanks for throwing down some emotes. You're the best. All right, we'll be back in a couple minutes. Bye-bye.